Babies are born with about 300 bones, almost a third of which eventually fuse together to form the 206 bone skeleton of an adult. Some of the bones in the baby's body are not really bone at all, they're cartilage, which are softer and more flexible, allowing the foetus to fit into the pelvic cavity. The skeleton is divided into two parts. The axial skeleton supports the head, neck and trunk, also called the torso. It consists of the skull, the vertebral column, the ribs and the sternum. The appendicular skeleton supports the limbs and attaches them to the rest of the body. It consists of the shoulder girdle, the upper limbs, the pelvic girdle and the lower limbs. Each of the 206 individual bones in the skeleton is classified into five different types according to their shape. Long bones are hard, dense bones that provide strength, structure and act as levers to ensure mobility. The short bones are small and cuboid shaped, offering stability to areas where their little movement is required, such as the ankle or the wrist. Flat bones are, as they sound, strong, flat plates of bone with the main function of providing protection to the body's internal organs and being a base for muscular attachment. Bones which have a non-uniform shape, such as the jaw and spinal vertebrae, are called irregular bones. A sesamoid bone is usually short or irregular, forming bridges to withstand pressure and is embedded within a tendon. An example of a sesamoid bone is the kneecap, which is called the patella. The skeleton gives the body its shape and changes as we grow and determines characteristics such as height and the size of the hands and feet. It ensures stability. A stable rib cage and spine enable the lungs to fully inflate when breathing. Along with the muscular system, the skeleton provides support to the body and keeps the internal organs in place. The strong bones of the spine, pelvis and legs enable us to stand upright, supporting the weight of the entire body. Hollow spaces framed by the skeleton, called cavities, hold the internal organs. The skull holds the brain, the chest cavity holds the heart and lungs, and the abdominal cavity encases the organs of the digestive, urinary and internal reproductive systems. Bone provides mineral storage for calcium and phosphorus, which are released into the blood supply when needed. They store fat, form blood cells and are under the influence of the endocrine system. A bone is made up of a number of connective tissues osseous, nervous and connective tissue, blood vessels and hyaline cartilage. There are two types of bone tissue, spongy and hard, creating a combination of strength and flexibility which can absorb the impact of blows to the body without breaking. Larger bones contain bone marrow which is the spongy tissue inside the bones and there are two types, red and yellow. Bones are held to each other by ligaments and tendons attach muscles to the bones. The muscular and skeletal systems work together as the musculoskeletal system, which enables the body movement and stability. When muscles contract, they pull on the bones to produce movement or hold the bones in a stable position. The outer layer of any bone is made up of dense, smooth, compact bone. The inside contains spongy bone, which is filled with marrow. The arrangement of each type is determined by the shape of the bone. Short, irregular and flat bones are thin plates of spongy bone covered with compact bone. There is no well-defined central cavity for the marrow to sit in and hyaline cartilage covers the surfaces that are involved in joints. Long bones are different. They're made of thick compact bone creating the shaft called the diaphysis with a medullary cavity running through the centre, which in adults contains yellow bone marrow, which is high in fat. The ends of a long bone, called the epiphysis, is a spongy bone, which contains red bone marrow and is covered by hyaline or articular cartilage for cushioning and stress absorption. The red bone marrow produces blood cells. Encasing the bone is an outer covering of dense irregular connective tissue and an internal layer of stem cells. This layer is called the periosteum and is connected to nerve fibres and blood vessels which pass through the shaft to the marrow. The outside of the bone is shaped with markings that we use to identify specific places, either projections that bulge out or depressions or openings, such as grooves, 
fossa or foramina.